nice. Welcome, everybody. I see folks starting to filter in already. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm going to start talking a little bit to introduce uh, what we're doing today. Um, if you're here, you probably already know. But um, this kind of came up um, as, a, as a response to some, some news in the WordPress space. Um, and um, uh, from if you most everybody who's probably here and uh, registered to be here uh, most likely read uh, a very transparent article from our friend uh, Mika Epstein, who um, has been dealing with a lot of online harassment for a long time. And Mika, in that article, uh, made two big suggestions. Um, one was that she would encourage everyone to um, to 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 help those who suffer from online abuse. Um, and then she also said that plugin authors or, 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 or plugin and theme authors in particular should really have conversations about what we can do to help uh, prevent that type of thing in general. So seeing that, um, I, uh, I, I wanted to try to do all the above as much as possible. Um, and uh, I reached out to all the fine folks you see on the panel here uh, that we're going to introduce right now, uh, one by one. And um, and uh, we said, let's have a conversation. Let's talk about this. Um, and hopefully, ideally, some things will come up that will provide some resources and tools um, that uh, we all can be more proactive about uh, preventing online harassment in any way possible. So I'll introduce myself first. I'm Matt Cromwell from GiveWP. And um, thank you all for being here. I'm in San Diego. Um, I, I help and build the, the GiveWP uh, donation plugin for WordPress. And uh, I enjoy what I'm doing. I, I, I enjoy what I do, and I enjoy having all these people here to talk with today. So um, let me pass it over to Kim. Great. I'm Kim Coleman. I am co founder of Paid Memberships Pro, WordPress membership plugin, um, fully open source in the repository. Um, we've been doing that for 10 years. Uh, we live in Reading, Pennsylvania, and I'm glad to be here too. Andrea. Hi everybody, um, I'm Andrea and I have been uh, working in the WordPress.org uh, ecosystem for about 10 years now, mostly in um, community leadership uh, and commu local community event organizing. Um, and uh, my employer is automatic, but all of my time goes to uh, supporting WordPress contributors and helping them get what they need to make WordPress fantastic. So I'll pass it over to Pippin. I'm Pippin Williamson. I'm the managing director of Sand Hills Development. Uh, we're primarily a WordPress plugin company, uh, mainly e-commerce and affiliate marketing, including uh, easy digital downloads, affiliate WP, previously Restrict Content Pro, uh, WP Simple Pay, Sugar Calendar, and a number of other ones. Uh, I've been in WordPress for uh, at least 10 years. Uh, I kind of forget how long it's been at this point. Um, and I'm located in central Kansas down in the middle of the United States and happy to be here. Last but not least. Uh, hi everyone. I'm Yoast, the founder of a company called Yoast. Uh, I've been in the plugin space for 15 years. I know rather exactly because I started doing it about eight months before my son was born, and it's relatively easy to track that. <laughs> um, I um, come to you from uh, Wiegen, a small town in the Netherlands, which is uh, on the other side of the pond, so it's evening for me instead of uh, somewhere during the day. Um, and I'm the chief product officer at Yoast, where we build the Yoast SEO plugin and some related stuff. Excellent, cool. Thank you all so much. And the chat is open. So if you're here and you're attending and you have some burning questions you'd love to ask uh, the panelists, then please chat it up uh, and uh, let us know. And we will try to filter those in throughout the conversation. Um, so I introduced um, uh, a little bit of the article and um, uh, the context in which we're um, talking today. Um, so in particular, um, the issue of uh, online harassment through basically a lot of different emails, uh, a lot of different forums. Um, and this is all technology. These are all tools that, that some of us build. Um, and that's the context. Um, and uh, I wanted to first just hear a little bit of some perspective from everyone else here. I think uh, Andrea in particular probably sees a lot uh, of activity that happens through .org. 
um, that, that might also be relevant because Mika's story I think is very poignant and specific uh, to her role. Um, but I, I also don't think that the problem is unique necessarily. Um, and so I'd love to just flesh it out a little bit and broaden it out. Uh, what kinds of abuse have you seen happen in uh, the .org space in general? Uh, we can also talk broadly about like the types of abuse we all are witnessing happening through Twitter and Facebook and other uh, mm -hmm. mediums. Um, let's just broaden it out a little bit. I can um, chat to one that we've experienced recently um, related to someone who bought our product and um, actually it turned out hadn't actually bought our product, but felt compelled to email us and tell us they would come to our house and punch us in the face if they could find where we lived. Um, Cause they were so disappointed that we, I think it was a recharge and it turned out not even being our product. So that was just, and their explanation then was you would have done the same. You would have said the same thing, which mm. is totally untrue. Um, we did also have a .org uh, review uh, tell my husband that they thought he was on the autism spectrum disorder because of the way that he handled customer support. Um, that was removed by .org. So Andrea, if you had involvement in that or anyone else. So we appreciate that that name calling wasn't um, allowed. I didn't, but a uh, shout out to our yeah. forums moderators who are spectacular and handle yeah. a lot of very problematic um, communication and uh, prevent it from going much further than a few steps. So um, they are excellent and they their work is super valuable and also not always visible. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to big ups to them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I think it happens to almost everyone at some point that you get the kind of emails that Kim uh, just described uh, as you build a plugin that or a piece of software that's used by a lot of people. Um, it is, it, I, I would want to say that it becomes easier, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you, you get a bit of a thicker skin at some point but uh, I, that doesn't necessarily make you a better person. Um, and it, 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 is, it is very weird. I, I remember um, this was actually the point where I started hiring people uh, uh, back in 2012, because I was sitting in front of the computer, literally crying at the, at the abuse that I was receiving uh, over email. And Marika was saying to me, why are you doing this? You don't have to create this plugin. At least make some money from it if you're getting this kind of, this type of abuse. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, well, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is, people can be incredibly rough, even over a free plugin. But it's, the problem is that they would probably not do that to your face. And uh, that is, and that's where I thought that Mika's story was really scary because that looked to be beyond that, to be at the mm -hmm. point where where it would where it really felt that it would happen to her face as well. Mm -hmm. And that's usually so. Usually, I I engage with people who do that and say, "Hey, something is obviously going wrong," but this is not the way I want to communicate. And you try to be open and, and, and well, bring some humanity back to, that, to those conversations. But that is incredibly hard when it actually crosses the line. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I yeah. think that there's a real distinction between someone, I mean, threats are threats. Uh, so like that alone is unacceptable and then you know you have to um you know there we have multiple ways of dealing with that um but when um when when it escalates like that especially for the folks who are putting their time pretty selflessly to mm -hmm. making the wordpress ecosystem a safe and prosperous place to be it's really alarming. I mean, we've had people be doxxed as a result of um, an 
un, un, uh, favorable to them uh, review. We've uh, almost all of the people in the in the WordPress contributor community that have the unfortunate job but necessary job of telling people no mm -hmm. are um have received really outlandish and sometimes abusive responses mm -hmm. to setting those boundaries um and it's it's one of the jobs that is is really hard those jobs are are very hard to staff um, for good reasons. And those jobs carry a lot of emo extra emotional baggage and emotional yeah. labor. And um, unfortunately, sometimes require people to be more, to be cautious about what they share about themselves. Um, although I will say that like the case of harassment that has brought us together for this conversation today is, is does really stand out. Like uh, I, I have, I'm one of the people who responds to behavioral problems in the project. So I have seen a lot of different examples of, of it, problematic behavior, but this one really um, mm -hmm. is, is remarkable. Yeah, uh, the, the, one, the thing that stands out to me as remarkable in this case was that anytime that I have had somebody who was abusive in their tone, um, it's usually the case of like, you know, pacify, leave them alone, they'll go away. Yeah. Um, what's so tiring for and burnout ish for, for Mika seems to be that this was long, long, long going yeah. Yeah. and continuing to, uh, to go on and on and on. Um, and I think that's where the tools question comes into play is that like, you know, this is so unreasonable. There has to be a way to just stop this traffic in one way or another mm -hmm. from, from, from getting to, to her. Um, and that's the part that to me too is like, um, like similar to what Yost was saying that when when we first built the plugin and there was some negative comments or things like I, I might thicken up my skin in different ways, um, but then when we start having employees who are then responsible for responding to these things, um, and they receive it very differently. Um, they didn't build it, but they're working here, and um, the last thing I want is for them to start to internalize that type of feedback on them personally. Um, and so anytime, you know, I'm sure this is across the board, everyone would agree that anytime anything like that starts to, the tone starts to get like that, it's like, oh, that's, that's mine, I'll take it. Um, uh, and let's remove you from this, the equation as much as possible. I, I honestly, um, so most of you will know Taco on our team who, uh, who deals with a lot of those. Um, I honestly, because we have him and a couple of other people like him, I don't have to deal with those anymore either. Um, also, he's better at pacifying people than I am. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, but it is it, it is something that you don't want to be part of someone's job. Yeah. And I, it, it did make me wonder, like, how can we protect people? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm honestly not sure. Yeah, I think I, one of the um, one of the, at least from my experience, because you know we we've, we face a lot of the exact same challenges with unreasonable, abusive, um, and every range of of comments possible from um, users of our products to customers of the products, and I think the one of the most important things that we've been able to do, at least for our small team, is make sure that it's not any one person's burden. Mm -hmm. I think the unfortunate reality is that this is not actually something that can be completely prevented. It's, it is simply not feasible on the scale of the internet. Um, and so rather than trying to, not saying that we shouldn't try to fix it, but one of the best things we can do is mitigate it. And I think one of the best things we can do there is just make sure that it's not one person's job. It is mm -hmm. not one person's burden to bear. Uh, I know that early on on my team, it was very much, I, I felt like I had the responsibility 100% of the time to take those cases because you know I built the thing. At the end of the day, they're mad, they're, this person is mad at me. I'm going to absorb that so that my teams can not have to bear that burden. Exactly. And you know what? It almost made me walk away. Um, mm -hmm after a few years. Mm -hmm. And so today 
I would say that we, we share the burden. Um, you know, it's not just my job to take care of those. It is not just our head of supports job and it is not just our individual team members jobs. Um, we all do it a little bit. Um, you know, that's not a good solution. Um, yeah. but I think it is something that is very effective, at least mitigating the impacts. And if I think about you know, going back to the specific case at hand, uh, with Mika and related to largely the plugins repo on .org. You know, that is a, a team that, um, and I, I'm saying this as somebody who used to be on the team, um, uh, it's extremely small. There is not enough people to help bear those burdens. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I concur with the approach of spreading the load. I think like there is a lot we can try to do with automation, but like mm -hmm. there with things like um, what WordPress is willing to host and distribute that there, there are, you know, you, you, I don't know of a good way to take out the human part. Um, and so I think distrib you know, sharing the load um, is, is a great way to at least reduce the impact or reduce the intensity um, among the people who have very kindly and very bravely taken on the role of being making unpopular decisions. Mm -hmm. um, but we desperately need more people to take on those roles. And quite candidly, I don't think it's a good role for unpaid volunteers. I think mm -hmm. it's a role that really, I don't feel comfortable with asking unpaid volunteers to take on that level of high risk, mm -hmm. um, that uh, activity, mm -hmm. because I think you need a team that supports you. Uh, I think it's important to have an employer that can get make sure that you get the kind of, kind of human resources um, and training that you might need. I mean, the project also is, I'm working up some, some you know, I've created a de-escalation training and I worked, mm -hmm. um, we're working on some more trainings for contributors, but you can't train someone how to keep someone else from escalating beyond all reason. And, you know, you can't train someone how to keep someone else from, from committing uh, harassment and crimes. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, like it's, uh, we need yeah. more people. And um, that still won't stop it. Um, but I think that there are ways that we could, that technologists could approach the tools that they write in a way that helps people protect themselves more easily, mm -hmm. um, or at least more completely. And mm -hmm. I think it's great that Mika raised that question um, for this community of, highly optimistic, incredibly innovative technologists to ask ourselves, like, how can we get creative here in making it so none of the users of Yoast or uh, your memberships plugin or give mm -hmm. or any of Pippin's 300 plugins of mm -hmm. how can any, <laughs> how can you protect all of your users from having to um, really suffer through this kind of thing, because it's not yeah. just WordPress. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's, uh, this, is, this is a challenging thing with open source, but it is just an observation I'd like to share real quick. Uh, and I, I don't think this will surprise anybody here, um, especially, um, you know, each of us that runs a commercial plugin business, but the, uh, the single fastest way to uh, get rid of abuse that I've seen or get rid of, uh, uh, let's say avoid toxic people is just charge for your stuff. <laughs> doesn't help open source. It genuinely, I mean, it really, that doesn't help us at all in this particular conversation. But I do think recognizing that is important when we consider different things that we can do on the technology side. Um, you know, I, I don't have any proposal for it. I don't have any great ideas, but I think starting with some of the observations is a good point, good place to start at least. Mm -hmm. It's definitely something we encourage with memberships sites that are built on our product to make a free membership site is not as protective as a dollar a month. Some nominal fee that will prevent people from joining your community 
um, and just wreaking havoc and disrupting a safe space that some people are using in a membership community or mm -hmm. entering and joining your directory um, and just being spammy. So some small fee does show people or show the admins that the people who are joining have a higher level of interest than people without a, a paid fee. Mm -hmm. there, the, the problem is that there is actually also a, a reason not to want to charge. Mm -hmm. There so, is, yeah. Uh, I, I, if, especially for us, it's very fundamental that we want that we want everyone to be able to build a site that can be found. Um, even if they build a site for something that uh, for an agree that uh, for a, a reason or a, an ideal that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, that's also very painful. I mean, I uh, I look at. Uh, politician sites uh, all the time and see them using our plugin and I can honestly say that not all politicians in the world are people that I'd like to have on my dinner table um, but but a whole lot of them use our software to promote their ideas yeah. and so you're giving a tool to promote ideas to people that's literally what we do Mm -hmm. And some of those are the ideas are pretty abusive. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the only line that we set ourselves is that if those people become a customer and do a support request, is that our support team is, is willing and able to just say, no, we don't want to help you. Yeah. And, and everyone in the team can just say, I don't want to do this site can we uh, refund it and then yeah. we'll refund it and we say we don't want you as a customer but mm -hmm. we can't even say just like wordpress.com can't cannot we can't even say up front that we were going to look at that site and see who's going to use that our, our premium version or something like that it's undoable yeah taking just too much taking kim's thought super quick on the membership side of things like if you just, and Pippin mentioned it too, the, the the charging, this is a crazy idea. And it's a little bit of a segue into the next thing we want to talk about with Andrea specifically is um, what what if what if we did ask um, WordPress.org users to pay a dollar a month? Um, uh, like it's, yeah, it's a free plugin. You could download the free plugin in your, in your site whenever you want. Um, but, um, but if you want to get support for it, it's a dollar a month and that goes to the foundation. I mean, it doesn't go to plugin authors or anything. Um, I mean, I think there would be outrage and and like, it's like <laughs> kind of like punishing the 99% because of the behavior of the 1% in some ways. But I mean, thinking of, I mean, thinking of- is it, <laughs> is it technically possible? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it likely? I would give it a 0.01% likelihood <laughs> um, in any future that I can see. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but. Well, it's also a dollar a month sounds like a very small amount, but in, right. the, in large parts of the world, it's actually a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the part that's the tricky bit is making that scale globally. I, I, I mean, for us, it's like it, I look at world maps of where our purchases come from and our and our users are, and I, I go crazy mm -hmm. because yeah. they're literally everywhere, mm -hmm. and um, and we need to be open to that. I think because yeah. that is if we want to spread the ideal. The, I think that part of it comes with the territory of trying to to democratize publishing is that you're opening up yourself the whole time and that with that comes mm -hmm. a level of abuse that you can't really prevent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea, can you talk a little bit about um, just the .org perspective on, did .org do everything that they could along the way for Mika um, and um, did it work as effectively as it could? Um, that can, can you navigate that safely and sure, sure, sure. In a yeah, way I absolutely can. Um, so, uh, as far as like doing whatever could be done, I, I, I was personally involved in pursuing ways to get this to stop, and um, over a, a, a not all the time, but quite a long time. 
and we went to farther lengths in this case than than we've gone in the in in all of my time um and pursuing issues even um on a on a legal um framework that just hit a bl the blank wall the the brick wall of uh international uh of internet anonymity and cross national lack of you know kind of rules tools or understandings um the fact of the matter is is that if you want to harass someone in another country and your country doesn't have any laws that allow someone to complain internationally about you and have the police do something about it, mm -hmm. um, then there's very little that can be done, mm -hmm. which is, you know, and I, I will say like, I know that we're a big community and we're really strong and smart, but I encourage us away from the idea of let's try to get a law passed because I think that is outside of the scope of our, of our capacity. <laughs> um, although mm. if, if you want to talk about it, I'm happy to do that. Um, but yeah, we changed the, we, we made a lot of changes um, to at least hide the, um, the but or minimize the places where this person could you know use um but there's you know due to the openness of the product project it uh it just hasn't been possible to actually get it to stop yeah um and that's i mean and it's a real point of of discomfort for me knowing that like everyone and I and what what I'm trying to do now is make it really clear to contributors like this is what the project can do for you and this is what we can't prevent you know we can't prevent if you have a public presence or if you if you have if you take up space on the internet, we can't prevent someone from coming and finding you in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I, and I, we can prevent it in our space, mm -hmm. but because WordPress is a public and private organization, you know, um, and it, it's, it's a point of difficulty for me with the diversity and inclusion work we do in WordPress, because mm -hmm. I can't promise women or underrepresented uh, people from underrepresented places that they won't be, you know, that they won't have people saying horrible things to them mm -hmm. out in places where I can't delete them, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, that's one of the most shocking things to me because as much as I uh, can feel sad for myself about some of the abuse I, I, I took, in the, uh, especially in the beginning, if I look for a couple of minutes at what Marika, my wife, our CEO gets on Twitter and everywhere when yeah. as soon as something happens. Yeah. yeah. Like it's ridiculous. We can fix a lot. We cannot fix institutionalized uh, racism and sexism. Um, yeah. We can make it better in our spaces and we can educate people. Yeah, and I we think we're, we're, we're trying hard and doing yeah. well, um, yeah. which doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, it is it is so hard, and um, it, so if you if you look at the uh, the ethical licenses and, and the things that you brought up, uh, Andrea, and I, I was looking at those, and I'm like, I I sort of want that, and at the same time, I'm I'm fighting in my head on is that what a really the good solution is that is yeah. it because some of the ideas that we now might find despicable might be viewed entirely differently in 100 or 150 years. Uh, and who are we, are we to, to say what is what? And um, so that it's just, the GPL is very, very simple in that regard. 
<laughs> and a very simple license. And uh, maybe too simple in some ways. Uh, yes and no. It's simpler I, I, than ethics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ethics are complicated compared to the GPL, which is yeah. also complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do have some really helpful comments uh, I want to highlight super quick. Yeah. Ed uh, actually asked a question that I think Andrea actually mm -hmm. already responded to more or less, mm -hmm. but Beth Hannon is here. Hi, Beth. Mm -hmm. And she says, is there a way not for a law, but for users to be required to opt in for certain behavior requirements that could be enforceable internationally. So I think that's an interesting line. You were saying, you know, we can have the, the, the law conversation, but that might not be entirely fruitful. But at least when they sign up for an account on .org, there's a, uh, uh, some sort of checkbox that you have to be like, yes, I agree to these things. And if they don't um, behave that way, then it could be enforceable. Um, yeah, like that, that idea is essentially a, a project-wide code of conduct. Um, which has been a topic of conversation for y'all as, as long as I've been here. Um, and I'm really excited to share, I don't know if people saw it, um, that Josefa, um, just what, yesterday, day before, posted this um, announcement um, saying that uh, because the, the, the project-wide code of conduct or community code of conduct has been a topic of discussion for a very long time, it is difficult, as I mentioned, to bring together committees to decide on behavioral expectations for an organization as broad as WordPress. Um, and so uh, Josefa's intention is to publish a handbook which will include a code of conduct um, and that's then and that we can then start iterating on mm -hmm. right so there can be community feedback and on it there can be community work on it to iterate it because of course nothing we do is ever done um, but I think it's a good kind of first step to making it clear because I mean we do to some extent have a project-wide code of conduct. I mean, the, the, the community events code of conduct has been kind of ported into various spaces in the WordPress community, right? Um, and certainly once uh, community events went online due to the pandemic, like the, the, the kind of online events code of conduct is a little bit more applicable to .org interactions and things like that. Um, but like all of that is what we can control in WordPress spaces. Mm -hmm. We can't control what happens in Twitter, in Facebook, mm -hmm. in individual websites. We can't keep someone from using WordPress to write, here's how much I think Pippin is the worst uh, mm -hmm. articles, you know, like that's, that's outside of the scope of our control. Mm -hmm. um, and so- I think along with this handbook, something could be relating to um, like mod look is what we use when a, mm -hmm. tra a tag. So something along with this that mm -hmm. the community could submit, I guess, a violation should be included. Yeah. Or every 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 code of conduct needs a way to enforce it. <laughs> so the uh, the kind of implementation or operational part next steps after mm -hmm. that include a way to report. Yep. And then some people who will enforce. Yep. Um, and that is um, not going to be easy to staff in yep. a time when WordPress contribution is very, very low for very good reasons. The mm. pandemic is hitting everyone extremely hard. Mm. Um, but my hope is, uh, I'm writing a post about this, but my hope is that we're, uh, the community team is developing a training specifically for how to respond to code of conduct issue, uh, reports. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully we can train enough people that we can kind of spread the load there um, reasonably so that we don't have high indexes of burnouts on that, yeah. on the team that then handles those, that reporting. Just a point of clarity for all those listening in right now. Um, Kim just mentioned mod look. That's a tag that you can add to um, threads on wordpress.org that um, then the moderators of the forum yeah. uh, basically get a notification. Um, and the moderators of the forum, uh, 
themes and plugins and help and all of those. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, they're, they're in WordPress Slack and, um, and they by and large are all volunteers as well, like Mika. Um, and they take a look at the whole entire thread. So that, that's one small thing that I always feel like is a little bit of a, of a small technical issue is that mod look is for the whole entire thread. And sometimes a thread can be forever long. Um, and what, which part of the thread is, is, is exactly problematic or difficult. Um, uh, but you know, typically what I do is if there is something, I'll do mod look and then I'll go into WordPress Slack and say, hey, this looks problematic. And here's exactly why I think it's problematic. Um, and uh, I see uh, uh, James Huff is here. He's one of the great uh, moderators as well. Um, who are helping with things like that. So um, yeah, that just clarity on, on, on how that works mm -hmm. for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would, sorry, I would Go encourage ahead. everyone to join a forums channel on Slack just to, to, just to keep the pulse of the community. It, yeah. it is. Yep, absolutely. Andrew, I don't know if you can speak to this at all. Um, uh, and I'm mostly asking you one, because you're very involved with um, things like this for the WordPress community, but you also are a paid employee of Automatic. Um, with um, how much, if at all, are conversations happening about somehow building a paid moderators team? You know, we we touched briefly at the beginning of this that, unfortunately one of the burdens that we have as a WordPress community is that the vast majority of people that are facing this type of abuse uh, are entirely volunteers. And, you know, if, if, we, if we can acknowledge that one of the ways that we can mitigate these problems is having more people, aka more people to share the burden, um, but we also can recognize that it's uh, to a certain point, uh, perhaps unfair to ask people to bear those burdens as a volunteer. You know, what is there? Is there conversations happening about how to create a paid team? Well, I will say that um, we definitely follow the A B R C. Um, at ABRPC method um, in my, all of my teams always be recruiting contributors and always be recruiting paid contributors uh, as often as possible. Um, I, I think there are, there's tons of work for both. Um, and uh, I will mention at least half of the plugins team is, is paid. Um, and I know Mika receives some time from her employer for, for WordPress um, contributing. Um, so uh, shout out to DreamHost for that. She's a pivotal volunteer or pivotal contributor in our spaces. Um, um, but yeah, like we, we have what, one or two paid Paid reviewers right now. <laughs> All of those are are uh, on Yoast's team uh, right now, um, and it's really it's interesting, um, interestingly complicated to have paid uh, contributors doing reviews because mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunity for conflicts of interest uh -huh. in there. Yeah. Um, so, so like I can't pull plug in companies to pay for plug-in review and i can't totally. <laughs> no, companies you, to pay you, for the review you can't you wouldn't even be able to get me in there if you wanted to because i'd stay away i mean as yeah. much as i love mika there uh, and and the entire plugins team because they are doing a great job but if we had someone on that team um there'd be a whole conversation the whole time about how we are getting uh, preferential treatment or stuff like that. And I don't, I just want to stay away from that as much as possible. And on automatic side, that's also difficult because automatic has plugins that mm -hmm. are very popular in the, in the repo as well. Mm -hmm. And so like, now that's not to say it's an unfixable problem. We mm -hmm. could have plugins -y people in the themes -y spaces and we can have themes -y mm -hmm. people over in the plugins -y spaces that's doable. And hosts are pretty much 
good to go in either way, right? Well, like, uh, I, that was, that was until all of them started buying plugins. Yeah. That is accurate. <laughs> <But> yes, <laughs> it's tough, right? <laughs> um, no, I, would, I I know that for us, I uh, when we when we hired uh, uh, Ari and Carolina, who are on our team and who are both on the theme review team. Um, it was definitely a thing for me as well. And I was like, do I want that? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they're doing great work, uh, but it's also, I've been very clear, like I don't want any interference from me or our management in how the theme repository works. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so I, I keep pushing them to say like, ask for a mission statement for the theme repository, but don't, I mean, we, I don't, I don't want us to, to guide or lead that. And of course I do have opinions on that, which, which I'll share, but it's not, yeah, yeah, it, it is hard. It, it, and, the, and you know, one of the things that is in that document that Josefa uh, put out, which I was very happy to see is a, a, a conflict of interest policy yeah. Yeah. because it's one of the hardest things to navigate I've found in, in this space as you grow bigger as a company mm -hmm. uh, uh, because you get all these tentacles everywhere. Yeah, and sure. You can't really avoid it, but I also don't want a power play. And, yeah. and, and so it, it, it is, yeah. But it is, getting paid contributors is hard. Honestly, I wish more companies would do five for the future well yeah um and because if if they did and if hosts did that a bit more um yeah. then maybe we need to adjust five for the future because five percent of their revenues is a whole lot of money yeah. uh, but <laughs> but it, it does feel weird that we and we are not a small company. I mean, Yos is 140 people. Uh, we have five full time paid contributors to WordPress and a whole lot of people that uh, uh, do part time contributions. Yeah. But um, we're there are companies like us or sl a slightly smaller that are not doing that same contribution that are benefiting from WordPress every day. And I think that mm -hmm. if we can push more of those people. So one of the things where I'm in the same mode as Andrea, I'm constant, always recruiting is we're in post status as soon as it comes up in the post status Slack, which is one of those Slacks where a lot of community interaction happens outside of the community. Um, I, I keep saying to people like hire people to work on core full time. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly, I, I know that you, Pippin, have have people on your team doing that. I, I've seen that Syed has been hiring people to work on WordPress core. And don't just hire coders, because as much as coders are great, we, we need people in the community teams and other teams as well. Mm -hmm. But it's and, and and your people come here and they grow. Like I cannot mm -hmm. emphasize enough you give us your employees that you want to be fantastic leaders in a year or two there and put them in the dirtiest jobs in WordPress. Like they will have the support they need to become yeah. extraordinary leaders. Yeah. Like just bring them over here. It's a great place to try and fail and get back on the horse again. And then like have lots of support and deal with problems that will make the company's problems seem very doable. Yeah, so. <laughs> I, like, I like that a lot. I mean, I think in some ways that addresses a lot of different pain points in the sense that, yes, there's conflict of interest things. I, I know that Pippin had uh, a stint where he was on the plugin review team. Uh, I tried my hand at the theme review team and oh my goodness, like that is hard work. <laughs> work. Yeah, it is. Like they, they, they work hard on those reviews. Um, having volunteers do that much work from start to finish, um, it's a big demand. So I can imagine. Well, it, it, it's also a big demand for volunteers that are not spending 100% time on it. You know, if, if you are, let's say that you're, you're employed somewhere and your primary job is X, Y, or Z, and then you're doing some volunteer, whether it's review reviews of plugins, reviews of themes, helping in the forms, helping on the, the other various make communities, that's all extra time. And 
guess what's the first thing to go when you're, you're in time crunch? It's the extra mm-hmm. things. Yeah. And so, you know, I think one way or another, if we want people to be effective, we need people that are solely focused on, on, on whatever that role is within the community. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, and there is something to say for having a company behind you indeed with that can help you with issues and that can even provide legal support if needed. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I do want to move to, uh, in the interest of time, um, we're actually, uh, we're, I want to talk a little bit more specifically about um, distributed products like uh, what we do here, um, the tools that we offer. So just to be clear, Paid Memberships Pro, for example, helping you do uh, membership sites, which of course brings in lots of vectors that folks might be abusive with. Uh, EDD is uh, where you can, uh, just one example of the many plugins that Pippin has built over the years, um, uh, uh, is something where you can get customers from. Um, and uh, uh, Yoast, of course, stays in the back. Let everybody else deal with this stuff. <laughs> uh, SEO uh, uh, for WordPress, which is mostly um, meta information for your posts and, uh, and things like that. Um, but, um, and then give, we definitely deal with, um, donations, uh, from folks, um, donor comments is a thing, um, where they will add comments to their donation. Um, we've seen some interesting things happen in, on that front where sometimes an organization will, um, get negative attention and people will start donating to an organization on behalf of, the opposite of that cause, you know, um, and you know, it, people love to get creative in the way that they want to troll you. So even uh, even in the in the nice, generous, warm space of GiveWP, we've seen some abuse happen. Um, so on that front, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, tools or uh, ways in which we in our product spaces can help uh, be preventative. Um, I'll start with um, just something kind of general about um, what we, how we think of our product. Like we, our customers are the sites that are using the membership plugin and profiting from it. But at the same time, we have to think about the users that join their membership sites and what tools do we give the admin to expose their user profile information? What tools do we give the admin to see and know about their financial payment method? Um, So when we build, we have to think both about you know, who our direct customer is and, and then their customers and protections for them and the abuse that they might experience or that what could happen to their data. So, you know, GDPR did in WordPress did a lot to allow users to control their data to a degree um, and delete it, but also thinking about ways that people can um, authorize what can be done with their profile on your site and, and limiting in those factors, I think is important. I, I, I do agree that GDPR was actually probably good in, in, in many ways in, in, in making people a bit more aware of privacy mm-hmm. uh, for their sites, users, et cetera. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll be the token European and say that this, this was a good thing <laughs> as much as everybody hated the GDPR. <laughs> Yeah, the right to be forgotten, I think, is an excellent uh, philosophy uh, of GDPR, uh, especially in cases like this. Um, the loophole is nothing is ever forgotten on the internet. Um, uh, so, uh, I, I I would bet to differ. You can actually come quite close. So of course we could be we as web natives. If we searched hard, you could probably find all that. But for me, when I search for people in Europe, there is almost always that line of some of the results might be removed because a lot of people know how that works. And a lot of people use that. And I, and I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's more of like, specifically in Mika's case, um, you know, we can prevent some traffic from here, but and let's say that let's say this part is forgotten. Well, then they started going to this one, and then they started going to this one, and then they started going to this one. Um, yeah, and, and so the particular option to be like, forget me everywhere, please. <laughs> There's not. Um, so, but still, 
but it does bring up the important point that you know as tool creators we need to make sure that we are just as to keep going on gdpr for a moment there's a ton of people that did not update their their plugins or their products to support gdpr to the fullest extent and so i think one of the best things that we can do is make sure that we've done that you know if if we think about the, the various vectors that an abuser is going to find the information they need to get in touch with the person they're trying to abuse. Um, you know, a lot of that's old information just littered around the internet, you know, an email address on a page, a name, an address, you know, who knows? Well, while obviously we're not going to be able to be perfect and, and help remove all of that, as long as we have made sure that our tools do support it, then I think at least we're, we're contributing to the solution, even though it's, you know, unlikely to ever get far enough. But at the same time, it does feel like admitting defeat when we say that the solution is for the victim to hide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's a good point. Yeah. The ability to mute or block in more places seems more empowering for people who are uh, subject to abuse than the ability to hide better. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a, a what I would hark back to probably the most effective fix is support, not actually preventing the problem because unfortunately it's, I don't, I don't think it's a problem that we can truthfully ever truly ever prevent. Um, but we can do a lot to mitigate the effects of it. Um, you know, I think we should do everything that we possibly can to prevent it, but when we can recognize that we cannot go far enough to actually preventing it, the next step is to do whatever we can to make sure that the help and support is there um, for the people that need it. Mm -hmm. And to ensure that that support is there before it's actually needed. You mm -hmm. know, unfortunately, just like if, if we think about, uh, relate this, for example, to burnout, you know, burnout is a very serious problem um, and one of the most effective ways of combating it is actually combating it before it happens. And I think of the, the side effects of abuse are the same way. You know, we, we should be propping these systems up and, and the individuals before they need the help. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, there's aspects to it that, that, I think start, I, what I was encouraged by with Josefa's post there was there's a code of conduct and there's also a code of ethics. And I think uh, Andrea, you were pointing to that a little bit. And what Pippin is saying also is there's a preventative aspect and then there's a proactive aspect too. Like how can we, we be not only preventative, which is uh, which uh, what I hear you saying Pippin is it's not possible to be 100% preventative. Um, and are there other tools we can do that are proactive? and there's, there's ways in which I, I, I remember way back in the day whenever folks were still building in like simple spam bots where it was like if something was obviously noted as spam, they would redirect that person to the FBI website and things like that. Um, that was old, old school hacks. Um, but um, are there, uh, I've also seen um, where uh, an email address will get reported to a a certain spam uh, filter and one, or even as simple as a kismet or, or, or other things. Um, so different tools that we can apply in different ways. Um, anyone else have other specific um, tools that plugins can build in uh, to, to be helpful either on a preventative level, proactive level or other tangential thoughts? <laughs> well, I, what drove me nuts about this as I read the story was that I mean, this person was getting trying to get something on the plugin repository. They were trying to get something promote to build and promote it to the to the world. I mean, it, it, it just baffles me. I'm still I was I was rereading it as as we went into this, and I'm like, you know that this is gonna do the counter thing of what you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And and you're going, it, it, it just doesn't make sense. And I, I, I and because the, everything that, that the community could have done, they, told, they have done. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I do really think that what, 
if I understand Mika well, what, that uh, she was helped and there was a lot of support, which doesn't mean that it wasn't absolutely hurtful. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, that person cannot ever do anything in the WordPress space again, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And so we took everything away and it's mm-hmm. and it keeps going. And I'm like, yeah. why? Yeah. There is a, can't there is rely. A in which, yeah, there's a sense in which um, these things aren't new. It's just that technology has now given us mm-hmm. humanity the ability to highlight us ourselves in all the best and positive ways, but also in all the worst ways. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and will we be able to prevent those things from happening? No, they're going to keep coming um, for sure. Well, there's, there's that saying that I hope developers remember frequently, which is it's hard to make anything foolproof because fools are so ingenious. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the same goes for logic. It's hard. We can't build our technologies with the assumption that people are going to make logical decisions mm-hmm. um, because they don't. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, we are at almost the one hour mark and I want to thank you all for being here so much. Uh, it was an excellent constructive conversation. There's lots of really good uh, links at, that I'm going to try my best to save right now. Um, but uh, as I said from the very beginning, um, Mika had two requests and that was to talk about this and to do good um, uh, for those who are suffering abuse. Um, One way that she requested some support and help is to donate to the Trevor Project. Um, And uh, I will type that in right now. I just Uh, dropped it in. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, And uh, and help out folks who receive abuse uh, both online and offline, uh, especially young folks Um, and uh, Mika, we appreciate all you do. All the volunteers, James Huff also here today. Uh, thank you so much for all yes. your volunteer work. Uh, it's awesome and amazing and appreciated. And I do hope to hear from lots more folks about how this conversation helped them think about their technology, how that helped them to maybe change something, implement GDPR, like Pippin said, um, implement some new uh, ways to, to be helpful and proactive. So thank you all so much and peace, be safe. Mm-hmm.